Okay, so let's talk about this variation of parameters um, process. The idea here is that we have this second order ODE, which is equation one. It has variable coefficients and an inhomogeneity given by f of x. What we know is that the homogeneous solution is going to be the sum or the linear combination of two homogeneous solutions, y1 and y2, so long as those solutions have a non-zero Ronskian, which is to say that those solutions are linearly independent. What we learn from all of this is that if one solution to equation one where f of x is equal to zero for all x is known, then it is possible through integration to find the general solution, which is y of x is equal to y homogeneous of x plus y particular of x, where y homogeneous is given by equation. The first big point is associated with this following recall. And that is that given that y1 of x is a solution to the homogeneous version of equation 1, we make the following guess, and that is that y2 of x, the second component of the homogeneous solution, is not a constant multiple of y1, but a variation of y1 of x by the function k, which is a function of x. So, this is the good thing about differential equations. You can always guess some sort of solution because how are you going to um, figure out if you're right? Well, you just need to take the appropriate derivatives and then substitute those derivatives into the equation that you're trying to solve. So, through here is the first process step of that substitution. A key point in this step is that the homogeneous equation will appear again and because y1 is the solution to the homogeneous equation those components of this fun derivative involving a variety of terms because of the product rule, well, that part of the equation just goes to zero. So it cleans it up quite a bit. After that, the next thing that we want to notice is that the new equation is an equation on k, which is the thing that we're trying to find, the variation of x1 
or the function that varies x1, or y1, excuse me. And more importantly, it's a second order ODE in k, but there's no k terms. So it only has k double prime and k prime terms. And so that means we can perform a substitution on into the variable u, which will reduce the second order ODE to a first order ODE instead. And then through direct integration or separation of variables, we can find the u function. And so once that u function is found, u function is then related to the k function by process of integration. And it's exactly this technique that shows us what to do with repeated roots for a linear homogeneous and autonomous second order ODE. So in that critical damping case for the mass spring system, why we multiplied the second function by a t is outlined through that process. And so we see right away why it's better to just accept the rule and move on to see what the rule is trying to tell us about our mathematical models, very much an applied math viewpoint, versus really gutting that out. So where do we go next? Well, we now talk about this process of variation of parameters. And it's similar to how we just did the previous problem, only now we're going to, in equation four here, assume that the particular solution, which is supposed to be different than the homogeneous solution, is different by taking the constants in the linear combination up in equation two and vary those constants or those parameters. That's where the name variation of parameters came from. And it was also called variation of constants for a while. But I mean, that's just a rough thing to have to say, right? So this proceeds in very much the same way where we take these derivatives of equation four. So that's in the overall story. The next key step is to take, well, I guess I should call this here, key step number one for this second part here, this variation of parameters part. Okay, and then the rest is the process. So the work here can guide you as you deal with all that algebra, but we need to highlight some key points along the way. The key points here are highlighted in various colors, showing us what we're doing to specific terms in the equation. What I would tell you on a more abstract level here is that you're searching for two things. Those two things that you're trying to find are K1 and K2 but we only have one equation, and that equation is the ODE itself. And so probably the trickiest part of the process, other than just grouping the terms the way they're grouped here, is at this point in the process. All right. At this point in the process, you're going to make a statement about 
that equation that multiplies the b, right, right here. And so you're going to make a constraint on that equation. You're going to demand that that's equal to zero, which is a strange thing, all right? You're just going to take this term out of the equation and just reject it. It seems haphazard, it, and it's justifiable because, well, it works. But a way to think about it so that we're not too troubled by this is that we are still working in this regime where we're looking for two things, but we only have one equation, so we're going to have to we're going to have to set up some sort of constraint. And then once we set up this constraint, what we're going to get here is two equations with two unknowns. And if we happen to be able to solve that, those equations, then we're going to find exactly what we need to find are two unknowns. We're going to figure out k1 and k2. And if we can do that, and we can find k1 and k2 and be self-consistent as we do it, we will win. And that is the point. And that is the end outcome, is that if I have one solution to the second order linear ODE, to the homogeneous version of that equation, then I can bootstrap off of that and get the second solution. Once I have the second linearly independent solution, I can form the general solution. to the homogeneous equation. And then once I have that general solution to the homogeneous equation, I can vary off of it and find the solution to the whole thing, the general solution to the inhomogeneous equation, equation one. The process that we go through is pretty painstaking, but this is the process that tells us that muck works the way that it does, and that um, when we need to find the second solution and do a t multiplication, or we need to t multiply and muck, all of those things are inside the variation of parameters and reduction of order process, which is what this um, um, outlines. I'll also say that to solve the two equations, two unknowns here, I employ a little matrix algebra, right? and that's outlined in the notes as well. But really, we know that if we have two equations, two unknowns, these are linear equations that we ought to be able to find out some sort of solution, either by solving for k1 prime and then re-injecting that back into the other equation and solving for k2 prime. However you get it done, the last key thing that I would remind you of is that you will need to integrate k1 and k2 primes to find k1 and k2 for equation um, 4. I use a matrix algebra way to do this, but you could just as well do it by substitution, um, the old tried and true techniques, right? Okay, that's all.